Welcome to this rapid review of our model of the money supply, so let's jump right into it. Before we can build the model, we want to remind you of two definitions. So first is base money, or the so-called monetary base, and this is all the uh, you know money, effectively, that the central bank created. And it can end up in one of two places. It can be held as currency by the public, or held as banks, held by banks as reserves. So C denotes currency, and R denotes reserves. Then another definition we have is of the actual money supply, M. And there's different definitions, right? The There's M1, M2, the Fed used to keep track of M3. And they're basically just different levels of generality of like what we would include as part of the money supply. For our simple model, we're just going to include currency, C like above, and D for uh, checking account deposits. And now based on this, these two equations, we can see that M and B are sort of somehow related. In particular, you know, one depends on R, one depends on D, but D and R should be related. Typically in a banking system like ours, we have what we call fractional reserve banking. Fractional reserve banking. And in fractional reserve banking, if banks have, say, $1,000 deposited with them, they would only hold, say, $100 as reserved. So in fractional reserve banking, we'll have R is less than D, and this implies that B is going to be less than M. The money supply is going to be bigger than the monetary base because banks are only keeping uh, a fraction of their deposits on reserve. So what we'd like to do then is ask, you know, can we get an ex we know B and M are related. They both have C's in it. D and R are related. You know, can we get a specific expression for how B and M are related? So how are B and M related? So we're going to think more about that. In particular, we're going to try to derive an equation that connects the two. And in order to do that, we've got to introduce two new concepts. So the first is called the currency deposit ratio, or currency ratio, which we'll call, would denote CR. And this is the uh, ratio of currency to deposit, sort of like the, the name would suggest. And this is not going to be determined as part of the model. We're just going to take it as given. Basically, it uh, would be determined where people, you know, so people like you and I, would be asking, uh, how much do I not want to put in the bank? So how much do I want to hold as currency would be another way of looking at this. But I think it's helpful to talk about it in terms of what do I not, whoops, not put in the bank. Because this money multiplier process, the reason that the monetary base and M aren't equal is because banks are able to do this fractional reserve banking. And as a result, really, the, the important thing to think about is how much money is getting put into the banks. And C over R tells us how much is not being put into the banks. So that's one important definition. The next is what we call the reserve ratio, or reserve deposit ratio. So it's the ratio of reserves to deposits. And this is also exogenous. It's determined by banks. So banks ask themselves, uh, you know, I guess if they were people, they're not actually people, they're, they're banks, but they ask themselves, what fraction do I want to keep on reserve? So we'll just take the answers to those questions as given, and we have CR and RR. And what we did in class, and what you can sort of review on your own time, is a derivation that connects M to B using CR and RR. And what we ended up with was this sort of seemingly complicated expression, but it's really not too bad when you take it all in. It's CR plus 1 over CR plus RR times B. So M will be bigger than B because they're basically equal to each other, or, 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 or M and B are connected to each other because B is multiplied by this thing in parentheses. And um, we call this thing in parentheses the money multiplier. So this is our money multiplier. And we want to take note of a couple things. The first is we said that because CR represents the amount of money that people are not putting into a bank, as CR goes up, that means less money is put into the banking system, 
And because the banks then would have less money in the system, less money to multiply through the lending process and fractional reserve process, that means the money supply will be lower. So all else equal as CR goes up, M will go down. And our equation correctly tells us this. The other thing to notice is that as RR goes up, this equation tells us that M goes down. And that also fits with our sort of understanding of the banking system. RR is determined by banks asking, what fraction do I keep on reserve? Which means basically, what fraction do I not lend out? And thus, that gets bigger. And as that fraction gets bigger and bigger, that means banks are doing less and less lending. So there's going to be less of this money creation process through the banking system. So let's put this into, into action. We'll do an example problem solve for the money supply using the model. So we're told people hold equal amounts of currency and deposits. Banks keep 25% of deposits on reserve. If the monetary base is a million dollars, what is the money supply? So the first thing to do when sort of solving a problem like this is we need to bring up our relevant equation. So we'll write that up here. As we had on the previous slide, the money supply is CR plus 1 over CR plus RR times monetary base. We have the monetary base. It's a million. That's the easy part. What's missing in this equation or what we don't know immediately is what are CR and RR. And the real trick is being able to turn the words of the uh, given in the example into you know, numbers for these variables. So we'll start with RR because it's actually easier. If you sort of just read carefully, you're told banks keep 25% of deposits on reserve. So that means RR must be 0.25, it's 25%. So that wasn't too bad. CR is a little bit trickier. CR is the fraction of money people hold as currency, or equivalently, it's the, uh, the, the fraction they don't put into the banking system. But we're not told that explicitly. We're just told something about how much currency and deposits they hold and that they're equal amounts. But let's just write our definition for CR. It's C over D, and that might help, us get us, help get us somewhere because we're told they have equal amounts of currency and deposits, and we know CR is the ratio of C over D. So sort of on reflection, if there's equal C and D, then that means the ratio C over D must be 1, because C and D are equal. So CR is 1. We weren't told in that form, CR is 1, plug that in, but we were sort of told indirectly, and we had to process the information. And that's a really important skill. So now we have everything we need to plug in. We have CR, RR, and B, so let's do it. M equals CR plus 1, so that would be 1 plus 1, over CR plus RR, so 1 plus 0.25, times the monetary base B. We'll plug in, that for later, plug in for that later, so we get 1.6 times B. And B, we're told, is a million. So 1.6 times a million is $1.6 million. So our money supply is $1.6 million, and we've solved the problem. That's all that was asked for. So that's a good use of our money supply model. You'll want to get a lot more practice with it. It's really one main equation, but it's a bit of a big equation, and it takes some practice sort of translating the words and descriptions into something you can use with it. So good luck practicing. Thanks for watching.